Hi, I'm Dan with Family White TV, and this video is the making of my dual joystick gaming table so that I can play Star Citizen from the comfort of my home theater. And you could also use this table to play any other game that allows for dual stick setup. So I'm rounding off the edges with a router here so it's not nice smooth edges. Then I'm kind of messing up with this belt sander because I'm a noob with a belt sander and I got a bunch of grooves in there. Then I'm filling in the knot holes with wood filler to make that nice and smooth so I have a nice smooth finish over the entire table. A little bit more messing up with the belt sander. Couldn't quite see it there but once it's painted there's going to be a bunch of grooves and stuff in there. This is the arm for this going to be for my FOIP. And there's the first coat of primer and paint. And I just have a flat coat on the bottom. So here I am now. We are going to make trim pieces. This is going to be for the little table part where the mouse goes. So I have beveled edges there. Cutting it with just a little miter saw there. That's not a miter saw. That's a coping saw. And there's how the mouse is going to frame out. So now I'm installing M6 screws into the T16000M joystick. This one comes with three pre-threaded screw holes. What I found helps out is to put the screws in first, then kind of indent the uh, finish of the table with the screws, and that shows you exactly where you need to drill with the power drill. I messed up the first time. I didn't figure out that trick until after I had messed up the first time a little bit. So this time I got it right, and my little mess-ups is covered up by the joystick, so it can't really be seen. Now taking that part, the Logitech Extreme 3D Pro joystick, couldn't quite figure out how to get the top part off, so I had to watch a YouTube video to learn how to do that. So there it is. Now I'm actually drilling holes in this one because this one does not come with pre-threaded holes for screws. So I'm having to put those holes in manually and then uh, get the screws installed, basically pressing down just like with the other one, getting those holes in there. Now I have to shorten the screws up a little bit so that they uh, don't hit to the top of the joystick there, or the housing. Now for this one I'm using true part epoxy to hold the bolts in. Uh, the goal was to just hold the bolts in while allowing me to be able to take the screw off because I still needed to take the, uh, the joystick off the table. Now this is Tamika tape, which is a really awesome tape used for uh, basically making uh, masks for if you want to paint. So I've basically I'm going to stencil the MISC logo on here. And sorry I did not believe I would be able to actually stencil Musashi Industrial and Starflight Concern, that little tiny text that's supposed to go below there, so there's how that actually turned out. So right now removing the masking here to reveal the logo underneath. Didn't quite come out perfect. I did mess up a little bit of areas, but I was able to uh, fix that enough that uh, it looks uh, good enough for me. Now a coat of polyurethane. This is going to be one of at least uh, three coats that I put on either side to make sure that both logos protected and the table itself is protected. Now I'm fine tuning the 45 degree angles that, uh, that I cut with the coping saw. Make sure that those are nice and exact so I don't have to use near as much uh, wood filler to fill in those gaps. Now lightly sanding the table off brushing it off with uh, some cloth and then another coat of polyurethane. And after this coat, I just put those on while it was still wet just to kind of hold it there until I was actually able to secure it down all the way. So now what I did was I drilled holes through all of it to secure it down using screws. And then I used wood filler to fill in both the screw holes and the corners there so it looks like one continuous piece of wood so you don't actually see the screws in there. And after the wood filler is all in there, that's all sanded off nice and smooth. We are going to mask it all off and we are going to paint it with our trim paint. There it is, nice deep blue, the same deep blue as the walls on my home theater so it kind of somewhat matches. Now roughing it up a little bit so I can put a coat of polyurethane on there to go ahead and protect that finish also. Now this is a two-part epoxy that I used for a clear coat uh, because the, the, the surface wasn't particularly smooth. So now this is not the right product to use. The right product to use would be a clear coat uh, bar and tabletop epoxy. Uh, what this one was, this is just some epoxy that I had lying around because I'm a nerd and I'm into rocketry, so I use this to do 
fiberglassing and I figured well I can do this nice and thin and have kind of a clear coat but what we're gonna see here once it did go on there I'm gonna remove some buzzle bubbles from that but the surface crazed on me so it wasn't a nice smooth finish so that kind of sucked because now it's time for me to start wet sanding and so I'm gonna mask this off to protect the finish and start wet sanding wet sanding I sanded with 1200 grit and 2000 grit and then I tried to polish it up and it showed that there's a whole bunch of grooves in there so a lot more wet sanding starting with about 320 grit going up to 400 grit and then going back to an eternity later where I'm trying to polish it and just not really getting it to be glossy smooth so basically I said alright that's enough with that spent way too much time on it so I used some pledge to get a, as smooth coat as I could now I'm taking apart the keyboard so that I can attach this to the table also so I have to go through my wonderful selection of screws and bolts to find some that will work and then I find exactly where I can put them without actually running into the keyboard there so now I have the holes drilled and then I'm going to put some uh, bolts on and this time instead of the epoxy I'm just going to use some uh, plastic glue to hold the nuts in place. It doesn't need to be super secure just enough so that I can thread the screws in there and they're not going to spin around on me. Sorry I'm taking a picture of the keyboard because now I'm going to take all the keys off and I'm going to basically use a sharpie to make the entire background black. The reason is in my home theater it's nice and dark and I didn't like how brightly the white background of the keyboard kind of shone through so I wanted to mute that down a little bit. So using a sharpie I basically colored it in and now we're putting all the keys back on. They come off and go back on fairly easily on this particular brand of keyboard. Now we're shortening the screws so that they are the appropriate length. And we will get the keyboard into the table here. Drilling out the holes of course, getting everything mounted up. Now once this is all mounted here, we have the joysticks mounted, getting those in nice and tight, seeing how everything fits. Making sure it all lines up just right, just appropriately. And, uh-oh, there's the uh, extra USB port on the keyboard and it doesn't fit, so I had to grind away one of the legs of the Logitech joystick in order to make this work. So, as you can see, particularly messy. Got it as smooth as I can, and now I can plug in the joystick. Now we're going to be working on the FOIP arm. This arm is going to hold the webcam, and it also has an infrared spotlight that I'm mounting to the side of this thing. That is so that the webcam has enough light to be able to see me in the darkness of my home theater. I also mounted some, uh, some neodymium magnets into the keyboard or into the table and also into the FOIP arm so it will hold up and not just always flop right down. There's a hinge on the side and there's going to be those magnets to make sure that it stays up while I'm gaming. So also a bunch of cable routing going on here so that I can make sure that everything is uh, as neat and tidy as it can be. That way I don't have cords going down every which direction. Painting that same blue as the trim and that's a uh, like I said, it's house paint. It's the exact same paint I used to paint the walls of my home theater. A couple coats there, and I'm holding it in a heater. Now we're drilling the hole in that to make sure that I can get the magnet in there. Now I have the spotlight mounted on the side. I have the webcam mounted on the top. And now we're just doing more cable routing and zip ties and all that wonderful stuff. Now I'm putting some feet on the bottom so that the screws don't scratch the uh, coffee table while I have it sitting on there. Normally I have this on my lap, but I don't want to scratch anything when I move it down. Now I'm messing up at trying to plug in USB. Now here is the table holding everything nice and sturdy so that I can play Star Citizen. And that way I can also have everything held like the webcam and everything like that so I can do the FOIP stuff and that way I can also put it away easily rather than having a bunch of stuff that just kind of goes everywhere when I'm done playing. So here's some beauty shots of the finished product. What it looks like came out pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. So that all worked out for me and I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. There's a bell somewhere and there's a subscription stuff and 
and like buttons and all that stuff, so please go ahead and look at that. And uh, maybe check out some of these other videos about my home theater if you're interested in that sort of thing. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the verse.